as a new day dawned. The sun's crimson fingers gently caressed the tender bosom of the earth, gradually creeping across the fields, over hill and over dale, until it reached a certain wood where men and boys, women and girls, had on occasion found themselves wandering in the cool of morning such as this. How often they would walk through the trees, how often they would walk through these woods, venturing across bridges, listening to the gentle brook flow through the rocks and down the hill, the stream gurgling, trickling over rock and stone. But if any such person would wander, according to the old custom through these woods, no more would they gaze upon the mark and hear the wind rustling in the leaves, the birds singing from boughs and branches. There were no squirrels darting here and there. There would be no locusts calling to one another this evening. All that could be found now was an endless hill of ash and a dark cloud of smoke rising in the air. Here and there, what was left of a tree could be found, perhaps, smoldering, still warm. If one were particularly unlucky, one might even see the charred remains of the former residence. For all intents and purposes, as it would be written in the annals of history, a hundred acre wood was no more. As far as the local press was concerned, as far as the authorities would tell them, as far as almost anyone in the world knew, it was a simple accident. Someone, somewhere, as was perhaps inevitable, knocked over a candle, put too much heat in the fire, left some cooking unattended. Whatever the case, the fire had made quick work of the wooded glades, which the forest dwellers called home. However, what investigators would come to discover in the following weeks, and what was well known to those privy to the inner workings of the Hundred Acre Wood, was that this was no accident. No misfortune or chance had robbed the beloved friends of Christopher Robin of their ancient residence. No, this was an act of arson, a crime, deliberate. Someone had, quite intentionally, destroyed the Hundred Acre Wood, killing everyone inside. In fact, that was the main thing. For there was a secret in these woods, which it was in the great interest of someone else, never to leave them. Now that they were gone, perhaps things would be quite favorable going forward. Though it was the end of an era, for many, and indeed for our story, it was just the beginning.